Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video on ESD or electrostatic discharge. Now in the last video I showed you how a very simple carpet shock was enough to completely destroy a transistor and how you can use a few diodes to build a clamping diode circuit to protect against ESD. Now I also mentioned that more complex devices like micro microcontrollers would have these clamping diodes built in but I've always been told that those diodes are pretty weak and they might only be able to take a few hits before you know the pin is completely vulnerable to ESD so what I wanted to do is take one of these microcontrollers a very common microcontroller one that I'm sure all of us are familiar with the ATmega328P-PU and uh, let's fully isolate it from the development board Put it onto a breadboard here and let's just let's just hit it with a ton of vsd and see what happens so the setup is very simple we have a uh, at mega 328 p-pu running at 16 megahertz we've got the arduino bootloader running here uh, push button here with a 10k pull down on that feeding one of the digital inputs there and then from a digital output, we are driving an LED. Now, if we jump over to the code here, it's very simple. So we've digital pin two, that's our push button input. Pin three is our LED. And as soon as we boot up, we see the, we wanna write that pin high, then low. So just a 500 millisecond delay there. Now the point of this is so that the LED will blink if it reboots. So if we're hitting it with ESD, I want to be able to see if, you know, maybe we don't damage the pin, but maybe we cause a reset and that will indicate that for us. Then in the loop, it's very simple. We're just monitoring digital pin two. And if it ever goes high, write digital pin three high. So make that LED go high when we push the button. So it's as simple as that. Um, yeah. And this is a brand new microcontroller. Uh, has not been handled or used for any other project. So let's go ahead and zap this thing. Okay, so I removed the USB to serial converter from the circuit here. It's fully isolated. We're powering it from a power supply here, five volts. Uh, we're also gonna monitor the current to see if anything funny happens there. Uh, the, the ground connected to the circuit here is a true earth ground so that when I do shock it, I'm going to actually uh, shock, get shocked by it. Same, same kind of thing as when you walk across the carpet and touch a doorknob. Only what we're going to do is shock it, right it directly into that push button input pin. And also we're going to shock the output pin as well. And we're going to keep an eye on the current and we're going to watch and, and see if the circuit ever resets or if we see the LED just turn on for a little bit or is a final test to see if the whole chain still works. And that's really the idea of this whole thing is we wanna see if we can actually physically destroy that digital input. So when we push this button, nothing happens there. Now, if that's the case, you know, it could easily be the output is blown out as well. But either way, we're going to see a failure. So let's go ahead and start shocking this thing. Now, in my last video, I was using my finger to do it, and it was funny because somebody said, well, why don't you just use a wire? That way you don't feel the shock. So good idea to whoever that was that made that comment. It seemed pretty obvious, but yeah, I, I missed that one and took the pain throughout that whole video. So I'm rubbing my feet on the carpet now, and we're just going to go ahead and give it a shock. A little more. Okay, here we go. Okay, so right there you saw that the LED turned on and it looked like it was for about 500 milliseconds. So no doubt we just reset the microcontroller, but the input is still good. Okay, so let's just keep shocking and I'm just gonna go ahead and blast this uh, a couple times. Okay, so you can see that we're getting constant resets every time we shock it. Um, it's funny because whoever said that, like I was just saying that uh, using the wire helps, but I still feel it actually. I feel it like in my nerves though. It's not so much like that instant pain. It's like a weird kind of tingling. Okay, let's give the output a shock there. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, that was a good one. Oof. Yeah, it's weird. Like, I'm holding on to the wire, and it's like, when I shock it, it's like almost ha like the reflex, you know, through my finger is to open my fingers. It's, re it's a really weird kind of thing. Okay. So the circuit's still good. So one of the things, though, and I just probably shocked it 20, 30 times, a little bit even off camera while I was just sitting here, and uh, the circuit's totally fine. But one of the things to keep in mind is that it's, you know, in the middle of June here, and uh, it's pretty humid out. So what I really want to do is test it out with, you know, that dead of winter, super dry, wearing the, the sweater, you got the rubber boots on, get off the couch, one of those gnarly kind of shocks. So what I'm going to try out here is taking a high voltage uh, capacitor here, and I just found this one laying around in my junk bin, and uh, I'm just going to ground one side of it. Okay, just stick it in the breadboard there. And instead of shocking the circuit, I'm going to shock one side of this capacitor. Okay. Let's just hit it a few times. Okay, now I'm going to touch this, the push button input right to that. Oh yeah, so we could actually see a jump there. And, uh oh, so now the push button does not work. It is not turning the LED on. And the other interesting thing is look at the current. So it was pulling like 10 milliamps. Now it's pulling 0.09 amps, so 90 milliamps. So that's like a sudden jump and nothing is happening right now. So what happened there? Okay, that's, that's kind of interesting. Let's try charging that cap up again. Okay. And we'll touch it. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now it's pulling 200 milliamps. It still doesn't work. So that's kind of weird. Let's try power cycling. Okay, power cycle, we're back to normal current there. And, okay, the button's still dead. So there you go, we've caused some damage there, no doubt to the digital input. Um, so what I'm going to do real quick here is just change that input over to the next pin, which would be digital pin 4, just to see if we did blow out the input and not the output or something else is going on. Okay, digital input 4 is also dead, so maybe it was the output. Let's try changing the output to the next one. Okay, so this microcontroller is just totally shot. Uh, we Now the LED is stuck on, so we've got some serious problems there. The interesting thing, though, is that I'm still able to program it. In fact, what I'm going to do over here, and you can't see this, is just do a serial.begin and see if basic communication still works. Okay, I'm just going to do a little hello world kind of thing here. Okay, so we've got serial communication. That's working, no problem. We're, we're getting a, a hello world message on the output there. Uh, so let's just, let's give it a couple more shocks and see what happens. Okay.
Okay, so we're pulling like 300 milliamps there. And nothing is really happening, so I want to see how high we can get that. Okay, so now we're at a half an amp. Point six, six hundred milliamps. Oh boy, now we have an amp. But anyway, okay, so one of the things now we need to do, oh yeah, and it's getting hot too, so we definitely have a problem there. Um, so no doubt ESD is still <laughs> something you need to be careful about even with complex devices that have some protection built in. Um, so. Uh, there you go, that's a quick video, but before we end this video, we need to make sure that we take this microcontroller out of the general, popula general population here. So let's go ahead and widelerize it. Okay, so now we're going to widelerize these parts so that they don't end up back in my parts bins for me to accidentally ever use again and wonder why my digital input is not working. Now this was something that a famous engineer used to call, Bob Weidler used to call this when he needed to get rid of a component that was acting up. And basically all you do to widelerize a component is destroy it with a sledgehammer. Thanks for watching. Before I made this video, I was actually testing it out with another microcontroller just to make sure that I was able to uh, destroy the part with ESD. So I actually have two parts here to widen their eyes. So here we go again. <laughs> 